confession is really important. It's important to confess other things besides your sin. Okay, so it is important to confess your sin. I'm not telling you not to do that, but it is also important to confess other things, right? Uh, case in point, Romans 10, 9, and 10. What else should you confess if not your sins? Well, you should probably confess the Lord Jesus. Nothing will build your faith as quickly as a confession of who you are and what you have in Christ. And what, what do you confess? The things that you confess, the, the things that, that, that you say. Think about what you say. Confession precedes possession. Your voice is your address in the Spirit. Your voice is how heaven knows where to send that package to. He needs us to hold fast, right? So when, when the trials of life come, and they will come, hold fast. Hold fast to your confession. When you experience a, a death of somebody who's close to you, hold fast to your confession of faith, right? If, you, if you've had a relationship go south, hold fast to your confession of faith. If you've experienced bankruptcy, hold fast to your confession of faith. You have to hold fast to your confession. He literally needs us to say something of faith. That's what activates the power of God. That's what activates the, his, the work of heaven on your behalf. You've got to get the word in so that you can get it out. That's the whole purpose of getting it in. You don't get it in just so you can have it in and be like, oh man, I'm just like super like Gandhi or whatever. It's like, no, you, you need it in so that you can get it out, right? And because that's why it works. It works when it goes out. And I'm not talking about this like hyper spirituality or, or um, you know, this new agey thing or the secret. I'm not talking about that stuff. Listen, listen, man, God came up with this stuff first, right? And there's a way to do it his way. And if we get in line with how God asks us to do it, it will work for you, right? It's not a formula. It's instruction. So your identification with Christ is activated by the confession of your mouth that I am who God says I am. That I can have what God says I can have. I can do what God says I can do. Listen, if you're not impressed with who you are in Christ, you simply haven't seen him lately. The power of a positive confession means to say the same thing as the word of God says about your situation. Somebody says, well, I don't believe in this whole confession thing. It's too new agey. Well, then you must not believe in salvation. Because this is exactly how God says you get into the kingdom. You confess. Sometimes people who are trying to be humble are actually just being ignorant. Yes, we should be humble. Yes, I agree. We should humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt us in due season. That's what the Bible says, right? So yes, we should humble ourselves. However, what you must understand is that there are things that are timely and there are things that are timeless. Some of us are waiting for the right time to experience X, Y, or Z from the Word of God, when many of those things are not timely things. Those things are timeless things, and you can have them now. The Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick, and so the enemy just wants to keep that carrot out there on the string. It's like if you were on the front porch and you were calling for your dog that ran off. You're just out there calling for your dog, and your neighbor came out and said, what are you doing? And you're like, I'm calling for my dog. And they're like, you don't have a dog. And you're like, yes, I do. I'm calling for it. And they're like, well, I don't see it. You're like, well, that's why I'm calling for it. I'm calling my dog in, right? And it doesn't matter. My dog won't come anyways because she's deaf. But, um, <laughs> but some dogs will come when you go. Yeah, exactly. She knows where the food's at. Things concerning your redemption, think, things concerning your salvation, things concerning the promises of God are open season all year. God is always ready to save. He is always ready to heal. He is always ready to deliver. He's waiting for you to make your confession. He's waiting for you to say something. He, the Bible says he's watching over his word to perform it, and it's open season. You can have it all year. You don't have to wait for a special time. You don't have to wait until you become a super Christian. Right. You don't have to wait until you, your life is just perfectly right and you've got all your, your closets cleaned out. That's not, that's not what the Word says at all. You can have it right now. The winning fight requires a winning confession. We win when we say the same thing as. You want to win? I'm telling you, church, how to win. This is how you win. I can't fight your battle, though. I can come alongside you. I can bear some armor for you. I can hold up your arms when you get tired. But I cannot fight your fight. You have to fight your fight. So we win when we say the same thing as. We win 
when we make confession. But the spirit of faith declares the outcome in the middle of adversity. This is it. I'm putting my foot down. This is what the word says. Jesus said it. I believe it. That settles it. See, that's the thing about faith, people, is we can see the end from the beginning of our trouble. We know we're going to have trials. We know we're going to have tribulations, but I can see the end. I can see that the king has one more move. I can see that when I get cornered, that's when God works his best. Thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph in Christ. Hallelujah. Settle for nothing less than 100% victory. Don't settle for 99%. Don't try to make a truce with the enemy. He will not make truce with you. Listen, for our faith to become fully effective, we must continually acknowledge every good thing that is in us in Christ. And, and there's a wealth of good things in you in Christ. Tons of them, man. And they're, they're not just in Christ, they're in you because you are in Christ. Listen, the word that we just read it in Proverbs, the word is custom fit to your lips. The word of God was made to be spoken. Come on, it was made to be spoken, right? It's like a Ferrari that you take out and you go 25 miles an hour. Come on, man, that thing was made to be driven. Get on it. Don't just revere this word. Don't just revere this. Like, oh, this is the word of God. I, I don't want to take this off the shelf. I don't want to get it dusty. I don't, I don't want to write in it. I don't want to wrinkle the pages. I don't want to, I don't want to. Come on, this thing was made to be spoken. Get on it. Get on this thing. Write it and write it hard. So many people are like, oh man, I just, this is the holy word of God. I don't want to. It is the holy word of God, but this is just paper. Do you understand? So write on it. Put your notes in there. Highlight it. Ride this thing out, right? Use it. This was custom fit. It was, it was custom tailored for your lips and it's made to be spoken. That the word of God in your mouth is as powerful as the word of God in God's mouth. Kenyon said it this way. He said, your confession builds the road over which faith carries its mighty cargo. Your lips should be accustomed to confessing them. As you speak the word, it should become accustomed to you to confess the word. It shouldn't be where you shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be like uh, when you're around your friends, you're like, oh, he's going to say all those Bible things. It's like, I can't, it's not like I'm trying to say Bible things. That's what's in here. And what's in here is coming out. And you need to be accustomed to saying the same words, to, to, to saying the words of salvation, to saying the promises of God, to speaking out your faith, right? It, it needs to be on your lips. The word of God was spoken before it was written. Does everybody agree with that? That's true. It was spoken before it was written, but it was written so that it could be spoken. And don't speak what you think it says. Speak what it says. Say what it says. Get in there and find out. Well, that requires a little work. Yeah, it does. And it requires a little mentorship and a little discipleship and a little bit of all those things. But it's well worth it. Do you want to win the fight? Do you want to win? That's really all you have to ask. How badly do you want to win? Because most people are like, well, I want to win real bad if you win it for me. In other words, he's already said something about you, but he needs you to say the same thing. Every benefit, every blessing that is in Christ must be acknowledged and declared. You don't just get it by default. For salvation to work, what did you have to do? You had to put it in your mouth. If you want prosperity to work for you, I'm not talking about the prosperity gospel, come on. But if you want prosperity to work for you, you have to put it in your mouth. Get it in your mouth. Right? If you want healing to work for you, you have to put it in your mouth. Yep. Come on, I'm blessed in my coming. I'm blessed in my going. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. Come on, that's prosperity. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And the what? Word. The word. The word of our testimony. Not the thought of our testimony. Not that deeply rooted idea of our testimony, but the word of our testimony. 